Hey everybody, John Skiba here from the Consumer Warrior YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to talk about how to stop a wage garnishment. One of the most horrible collection tools out there, taking your pay, and we're going to talk about how you can stop that. But if this is your first time here to my YouTube channel, please click subscribe, check on that little bell. That way you'll be notified each and every week as I put out new videos that will help you deal with serious debt problems. Let's talk about wage garnishment. Um, I'm an attorney in the state of Arizona, uh, and so I'm gonna talk about Arizona specific procedure and garnishments as far as garnishment law. When it comes to wage garnishment in the state of Arizona, at least as of right now, in the fall of 2022, if you get hit with a wage garnishment, they're gonna take 25% of your pay. A full quarter of your pay is gonna be gone, which is a huge thing. Uh, studies show that over 70% US citizens have uh, live paycheck to paycheck, and so taking out a full quarter of your pay is gonna cause, for most people just a gigantic problem. So what I want to talk about here is kind of some of the strategies you can use and then I'll also give you the old nuclear option as far as how to get rid of the underlying debt and the garnishment immediately. So the first thing you can do is you can raise an objection to the garnishment. Now it's important to know how the garnishment process works is one, the creditor has to have a judgment against you already. So they had to have sued you, they have a judgment, whether it be something you contested, a default judgment, whatever it is, they get a judgment and then they file something called an application for a writ of garnishment. Once they have the writ of garnishment issued by the court, they have to serve that on your employer. Now your employer will receive the writ of garnishment and they're required to start withholding that 25% out of each check immediately. There's no waiting period or waiting for you to object, anything like that. They have to start withholding that from your pay immediately. They're also, your employer is required to give you a copy of the uh, writ of garnishment so that you can raise any objections that you have to it. Arizona law gives you 10 days. That's 10 business days to file an objection to the garnishment with the court. Now it's important to know something here that a, a filing an objection to a writ of garnishment there it really there's really a limited amount of things that you can actually object to it. You can object to it saying that you you know that you don't owe the debt. However, the only way it's going to be affected is, is if you can show that the judgment they have is not valid, like it's not you, you know they got the wrong person, uh, something kind of drastic like that. The fact that they didn't serve you correctly or they got the default judgment and you weren't aware of the underlying lawsuit or you feel like you had some defenses to the underlying lawsuit, objecting to the garnishment is not the appropriate way to do it. You actually have to file a motion to vacate the judgment in the underlying case. Now I'll put some links down below this on how you can actually do that, how you can file a motion to vacate it. But if you file an objection to the garnishment and you go to the hearing and you tell the judge, hey, I didn't even know about this, uh, or hey, I have some defenses to this as far as I don't think I owed the debt, the judge is not going to hear it at that stage. They don't have the ability under the law to reverse the garnishment or stop the garnishment just because you're saying that the judgment is not valid. You actually have to file a motion to vacate the underlying judgment before you're going to get any traction with that type of argument. So the other thing that you can do that a lot of people are unaware of is you can actually ask the judge to reduce the amount of the garnishment from as far as the percentage that they're withholding. 25% is the default percent that they're going to keep out of your pay. However, you can ask the court uh, to reduce it down to 15% by showing that it's going to cause a pretty serious hardship. Now, like I said, most people are living paycheck to paycheck, and so it's going to cause a pretty significant hardship to most people. But if you can come into the court and say, look, uh, this is going to cause, the, here's what the hardship will be. If you do it, the court can reduce it down to 15% of your check. They can't go any lower by statute. 15% is the cutoff, but that's something to take a look at as a way to reduce it. Now, in the garnishment hearing as well, some of the other things you can object to is if you've made payments as far as you pay the judgment off, if you can come in and show that you actually paid it and you don't know why they're doing the garnishment, that's super rare, then that's a situation where you can object to it. One that I've had some pretty good success with is if the judgment is in the name of one spouse, but they're trying to garnish bank accounts from a joint account, that's another way that you can raise objections. So those are the types of things that come up in garnishment hearings. It's not your typical, hey, I just don't owe it. You're gonna actually have to fight that at a different level with the court rather than the, the garnishment uh, process itself. As I said at the beginning, there is kind of a nuclear option to be able to deal with wage garnishment, and that is a bankruptcy filing. If you file for bankruptcy, as soon as that voluntary bankruptcy petition is filed with the court, the bankruptcy judge will immediately enter what's called a, uh, an order called the automatic stay. It immediately stops 
all collections, including wage garnishment. So I can tell you that's one of the main reasons people file for bankruptcy in my experience is because a wage garnishment comes in. Again, it's gonna cause extreme hardship. So we can come in, we can file what's called an emergency filing where we just have to file the first few pages of a much larger bankruptcy petition that immediately gets us that order. We can provide that to the creditor. We can provide that to the payroll people at your, at your uh, employment and that'll stop the garnishment immediately. No further garnishments are allowed if you can get that filed. And not only that, if you file for a bankruptcy, it eliminates the underlying debt as well in almost all cases. If you are needing to deal with a wage garnishment, uh, raise those objections. Uh, if you need to file for bankruptcy, you just want some more information on that, and you live in the state of Arizona. I could, because I'm only licensed in the state of Arizona, those are the only people I can deal with directly and provide legal services to. My contact information is below. Feel free to reach out to us, give us a call, fill out one of the web forms. I'm happy to see how we can help you as you deal with this wage garnishment and try to get it behind you once and for all. Thanks for watching today.